Hello two peas. We're going to carry on with factoring today. Uh, our goal, I can spot a difference of squares expression and turn it back into two brackets. So we're going to start um, by taking a look at these and what happened when we expanded them. So remember these were kind of special because the brackets looked exactly the same uh, except one had a plus in it and one had a minus. Now what happened when we expanded that? Well, let's take a look and let's remember how to expand it using the double distributive law. I do x times x, which gives me x squared, and then I do x times negative 3, which gives me negative 3x. Uh, now I have to take this 3 and put it through the brackets, so I get positive 3x. And lastly, I take the negative 3, or positive 3, and multiply by the negative 3, which gives me negative 9. Now, remember, when we did this, when the brackets looked exactly the same except for the sign in the middle, the two middle terms were exactly the same, but with opposite signs, which means they just disappeared entirely, and so all we were left with was x squared minus 9. Uh, we could ignore the outside and the inside terms and just multiply the first two things together and the last two things together. So let's do that with these ones. Now I recognize that those two brackets are exactly the same except for the sign in them, so I'm not going to bother using double distributive law. I'm going to know I just have to multiply the first two and the last two because the middle two are going to cancel each other out. So uh, that gives me 4x squared when I multiply 2x by 2x, and then positive 5 times negative 5 is negative 25. Now for the last one, once again, I do 3x times 3x gives me 9x squared. Remember, we multiply an x by an x, that gives us an x squared. And negative 7 times positive 7 is negative 49. The final answer is called a difference of squares. And I want you to remember that. Difference of squares. Both terms are perfect squares, so if we take a look at all of these things, 4 is 2 times 2, it's a perfect square. 25 is 5 times 5, it's a perfect square. Um, they come from multiplying something by itself, and the sign is always going to be minus. Take a look, minus up here, that's a minus as well, that's a minus as well, uh, because the brackets have different signs, and so this last term always comes from multiplying these two things that have different signs. And whenever you have two things with different signs, when you multiply them together, you get a negative answer. So the thing in the middle, this sign in the middle, is always going to be a minus. Uh, so there are three distinct characteristics that make a difference of squares stand out from other factoring questions. And we're going to be doing a lot more factoring questions uh, starting with the next lesson. So here's the three things that make a difference of squares stand out from other factoring questions. The first thing is that it's a binomial. That means there's only two terms. A lot of times we're going to have trinomials that have three terms in it. But these ones up here, and we'll just take a quick look at them, these ones up here only have two terms. One, two, because the middle terms cancelled out once again. Okay, so uh, secondly, let's see what point two says. It says it has a minus sign. Okay, So it's a binomial and in between it is a minus sign. If it's a plus, it's not a difference of squares. And lastly, both terms are perfect squares. Now before we can go on to recognize uh, difference of squares trinomials, we need to remember what perfect squares are. Um, so let's go through the first bunch of perfect squares here. One is 1 times 1, 4 is 2 times 2, then we have to go 3 times 3 is 9, 4 times 4 is 16, 5 times 5 is 25, 6 times 6 is 36, 7 times 7 is 49, and so on and so forth. 64, 81, 100, 121, 144, 169, 196. If you can recognize those numbers, it's going to make it a little bit easier to spot uh, difference of squares. Uh, and up here it says a variable is a perfect square as long as the exponent can be split in half. Uh, for example, an even number. And here I'm going to tell you why. Uh, if I have x to the fourth, 
I need to um, find the square root of that. So I need to know what did I multiply by itself to get x to the fourth? Well, I need a couple of x's. And in order to get four, I split that in two, so it's x squared times x squared, so that we have to add the exponents so we get x to the fourth. So for this example one, it says find the square root of each of the following if it is a perfect square. Well, let's take a look at nine. Nine is definitely a perfect square. Nine is three times three. So the square root of nine is three. And I'm gonna take away that equal sign right there because that's not appropriate. Square root of nine is three. Um, the next one, 39, that was not on our list of perfect squares. And x cubed can't possibly be a perfect square because I can't split three in half and still get a nice number. Splitting three in half gives me one and a half, not a whole number. So this one is definitely not a perfect square. So not applicable. 225, the square root of 225 is 15. And can I split eight in half? I sure can. So it's gonna be 15 n to the fourth, because then when I multiply it by 15 n to the fourth, I get 15 times 15 is 225, and n to the fourth times n to the fourth, now I have eight n's all being multiplied together, so it's n to the eighth. So the square root of 225 n to the eighth is 15 n to the fourth. Uh, 25 is a perfect square, it comes from five times five, so if I take the square root of this, I should get five and just an x, because I have to split that um, exponent in half. And this is exactly the same question, that's kind of silly, so I'm going to take the square root of it and it's five x. Over here, x squared can be split in half, but six there's six is not a perfect square. There's nothing I can multiply by itself to get to six, so this is not applicable. Uh, 36 is six times six, and I can split x to the 10 in half, so this is gonna be six, because six times six gives me 36, and x to the fifth times x to the fifth will give me x to the 10. So that's what happened when I took the square root of that. And that's also exactly the same thing. We're going to get rid of that. And this last one, 64 is, the square root of 64 is 8. If I take the square root of x squared, I get just x. And the square root of y to the 8th is y to the 4th. And again, let's have a look at that. If I multiply that by itself, 8 times 8 gives me 64. x times x, well now I have two x's multiplied together, so it's x squared. And y to the fourth times y to the fourth is going to give me y to the eighth. So looks like I found the square root. And you can always double check it by multiplying it by itself and following those rules for multiplying monomials that we did before. Okay, example number two. Spot the difference of squares and then figure out what brackets they came from. This is called factoring. Okay, so if we look through it, first of all, they all have to be a difference. For it to be a difference of squares, we have to have a difference, and remember difference means subtract. So I can eliminate this one right away because it has a plus sign in it. Look at that, it says n squared plus four. So I can immediately say that is not a difference of squares, not applicable. The rest of them I have to look at carefully and see if they are actually perfect squares because they all have minus signs. So they're all differences. They're all binomials, they have all got two terms. Now, are they difference of squares? Well, b squared is a perfect square and 36 is a perfect square. So, in order to get those, I'm gonna write down my two brackets and I need to have a b times a b to get b squared at the front. To get 36 at the back, I need to have a six times a six. And in order for the middle terms to cancel out, they have to be the same with different signs. So I have to put the two different signs in there. So b squared minus 36 equals b plus 6, b minus 6. These things are the easiest in the world to do if you just spot the pattern. 
Now, 25 is a perfect square, so is 1. In order to get 25z squared at the front, I'm going to need a 5z and a 5z. To get a 1 at the back, I need a 1 and a 1. And to make sure those middle terms cancel when I expand this out, they have to have opposite signs. Going down here. This might be a good point to pause the video because I'm just going to give you the rest of these answers. And if you pause the video and try to fill these in on your own and then turn it back on and see if you get the right answers. So this one is going to be to get 13 or to get 169 I need 13 u and to get 225 I need 15 because that's the square root. So we've got 13 u and 15 and to get the middle terms to cancel they have to have opposite signs. 144 needs 12 times 12, y squared needs y times y, and to get the middle terms to cancel, I have to have different signs. To get 9a squared at the front, I need a 3a and a 3a multiplied together. To get 100 at the back, I need a 10 times a 10, and to get the middle term to cancel out, I need different signs. Over here, I need a 4x and a 4x at the front. I need a 3 and a 3 at the back to give me 9. And to get the middle terms to cancel, I need different signs. Um, this one here is not a perfect square, so it's not a difference of squares. But I could factor it by taking out a 5 um, because I can common factor it. So if I take out a 5, I get 3p squared minus 5 and that's all I can do. I can't actually factor it as a difference of squares because it's not a difference of squares. This one here, to get 64u at the front, I need an 8u at the front of each bracket. To get 25v at the back, I need a 5v at the back of each bracket. And to get the middle term to cancel each other out, I need different signs. And lastly, 16p cubed minus 81. Well, 16 is 4 times 4. And 81 is 9 times 9, and there's a difference there. But p cubed is not a perfect square. If this had said p squared, I could do it, but it doesn't say p squared, it says p cubed, so this is not applicable. Now, lastly, sometimes a difference of squares can be disguised by a common factor. If you take the common factor out, then you will see that it can be factored as a difference of squares. So taking a look at this one, these are definitely not perfect squares. We have a 20 and we have a 15. Now, can I take out a common factor of 5? And I would get 5p squared minus 3. Well, 3 is still not a perfect square, so this one is not a perfect square. Looking over here, what can I take out of 32 and 18? Well, I can take a 2 out, because they're both even. And if I take a 2 out of 32, I get 16x uh, to the 5th minus 9x. Well, now 16 and 9 are both perfect squares, but I got an x to the 5th and an x which aren't. But we should have noticed that we can take out a common factor of x, too. So instead of taking out just the 2, I should have taken out 2x. So I'm going to take 2x out as my common factor and remember we need to divide both of these terms by 2x when I take out that common factor and I get 16x to the fourth minus 9. And now 16x to the fourth, that is a difference of squares. To get 16 at the front, I need a 4x squared and a 4x squared. And to get the 9 at the back, I need a 3 and a 3. And to get the middle term to cancel, I need a plus and a minus. And how about this one here? I can take a 3 out of this expression, and I'd be left with 9 minus 4n squared. Now, 9 and 4 are both perfect squares, so that can be factored further. I'll leave that 3 at the front. It can be factored further as 3 plus 2n and 3 minus 2n, because in order to get a 9 here, I need to do 3 times 3 
In order to get a 4n squared, I need 2n times 2n. And in order to get the middle term to cancel, I need a plus and I need a minus. And that concludes the lesson for today.